this is Amy. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to do part two of my birch tree series. I actually at this point I've only gotten so far as painting this particular glass. I still need to add the birch tree onto my other glasses. But I'm going to go ahead and do a demonstration of how I'm going to put in the leaves on this one. And this is going to be basically you know, just the green leaves. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and start tapping in one color at a time. Just kind of doing it like this. And I guess I should start too by saying that I'm using the Glass Art number one brush. It's by Dynasty and number 72. I'm going to be switching back and forth from Thicket, my citrus green, bright green, which is a multi-surface paint, and then fresh foliage. All the other the ones besides this bright green are actually just the uh, enamels. Alright, so let's just get started. I'm just going to, like I said, just go sporadically around the tree, and I'm just dipping my paintbrush into the paint, and then just gently patting around it. And I'm just going to keep doing this and add color in as I see fit. Okay, and that branch goes there. Just kind of looking at the branches and how they're how they're coming about. And this is kind of putting them on wherever I see a good spot to do it. And I'm just trying to stay towards the top part of the tree, or the top part of, of an actual branch, maybe I should say, and not really go like all the way down. Now because I have a little bit of a branch right here, I'm going to hit it, you know, hit it with, with some color. And then just keep doing that. And just keep going. And keep going and going and going. Now the leaves don't have to be any certain design. I guess that is just more of a da 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 and da 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 nothing specific just some light tapping it's tapping you know you can tap hit the tree too that's fine Alright, so I got the first round of color. I'm just going to just kind of drag the paint off of my brush a little bit. I'm not going to even go in between and, and rinse it out because I really don't want a bunch of water in this brush. And I'm just going to continue on with this brush and just keep tapping in some color. So there'll be four different colors. I think they're pretty. I think they're pretty colors. And they don't have to be any specific shape. And then come down. They'll have to be like just hovering around the actual branch. And if you feel like you got too much paint, just scrape it off. That's kind of what I do. Put 
putting these in here. I think they'll be pretty. I'm pretty happy with them for the first time painting them. What do you think? Have you ever painted this type of a gloss before? I mean, I know mine's a little unique because of doing the doing the sparkly paint behind it. Making sure I get enough paint on my brush too. I just keep turning it. Pretty easy, I think. I feel like I'm getting too much paint in my brush. I just scraped it off again. One thing I like about this, doing it this way, is that you know you can keep layering the different colors on it, and then you can actually go back over it if you want and add back more and you know some of the original color that you started out with because you might feel like you're losing it a little bit the more you add to this and if you have a variation to it if you've done these before and you have any uh, comments that you'd like to share the way that you put leaves on yours or if you how much differently you did it you know please let me know down in the comments below all right now I'm going to go in with another another color and this is my citron green again I'm just kind of hitting them and some of the colors will mix a little when you're patting them in and that's fine. I just like for the actual branch to keep showing. Not cover that up too much. And you know, another way of doing this, you could do this just using dots instead of just, you know, instead of pouncing with the paintbrush, just use some dots. That would be pretty too. I think I, using the variations of colors kind of give it some fun look too. <clears throat> yeah, I like it. Now if you're new to my channel please make sure if you're just joining me for this series that you subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell make sure that you get notified whenever I post something new. Also, once you've viewed this entire video, if you like it, please make sure that you find the button below the video to share. Share this with all your friends and family, your social network. That would be awesome. I am trying to grow my channel, so any help I can get, I would surely appreciate it. really would be awesome. <clears throat> also, yeah, I didn't just start this glass, but I do like to remind people that, you know, when you're doing a glass, make sure that you clean it before you start painting on it. And that just helps to get some of the dirt and grime and grease from being handled even you know, off of it so that the paint adheres better to the glass. When you're finished, 
if you're going to bake it now depending on the type of paint you're using I do recommend that you follow the manufacturer's directions I know with this paint I'm using is the folk art you do need to allow it to air dry for about maybe an hour or so and then you could place it in a cold oven turn it on to 350 degrees uh, I add the preheat time to my bake time so my oven takes about takes about 20 minutes to heat up give or take and by doing that I'm making sure that you know it's getting baked and actually will be very durable once it's done baking that timer goes off allow the glass to stay in the oven and cool down before you remove it the main thing to keep in mind is that any quick variation in temperature is what actually will cause glass to break so if you're moving it from one temperature to the next very quickly that's when you are at risk of your work being damaged or destroyed if your glass breaks so but I strongly 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 recommend following the manufacturer's guidelines and know what your paint requires as far as baking and you know any anything else that needs to be done to your glass as far as preparation with the folk art enamels there's no preparation that needs to be done ahead of time other than just making sure that you clean your glass so that's nice now some some paints because there's a variation of paints on the market they may require some kind of priming on the glass they also may require that it has to be baked to be cured I mean if that's the case you need to follow what it's telling you so you get the best results now like I said with folk art enamels you don't have to bake them they can be cured by air drying for 21 days now does that mean you can't touch them No. you know they dry to touch within really a few hours but I would say a good 24 hours is pretty safe bet you know, unless you've baked them and obviously <clears throat> they'll be they'll be dry to touch sooner but there are some paints out there in the market that do require you to bake regardless that they, they do not cure by air drying so just make sure that you read the bottles when you get your paint you read it and you go by what it's telling you to do because that truly is the key as far as once you finish your glass it doesn't ha doesn't actually have to be sealed in any way however I like the idea of doing some Mod Podge over the top of mine and I use the Mod Podge dishwasher safe gloss I like adding that just for some durability although if you if you put your paint on thick enough it's going to be more durable if you hand wash it and stay away from the dishwasher I think you're going to find that it lasts, lasts better also but you can dish you know you can place these in the dishwasher what I would recommend and just before I say that I'm going to go back over this a little bit with some of the darker green just to kind of add that in a little bit since I did all these other colors I'm not going to go over it with all the other colors again though just adding in some of the dark green again and just kind of some variation in how I'm touching it it's a light touch all right now 
gals will say if you watch watch my videos you know that I definitely push for you know, to apply your paint in a thicker manner to make sure that it is more durable definitely if you're putting it decide that you are going to wash in the dishwasher make certain that you're not putting that in the bottom part of the dishwasher if you have a very high heat dishwasher I would not recommend putting your glassware in there I just think that you know, if it's if it's commercial grade if you know that it's really really super super hot even if it's on the top rack I would be fearful of of the paint you know just coming off never allow your painted glassware to sit in standing water ever if you want to wash it wash it and then be done hand washing is probably the best the best way to handle it all right so there you go with this I like how it shimmers. I don't know if it's picking that up on there, but it definitely is very shimmery. Very, very, very shimmery. And I think very pretty. Alright, now you could also put some leaves down around the bottom of this if you chose to do so. I'm not sure that I'm going to do that at this point. I think I might just leave it as it is. But I do like it. All right, so again, if you haven't done it already and you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell to get notifications whenever I post something new. This is just part two of my birch tree series, so stay tuned for more to come. Make sure if you like this video, you give me a big thumbs up and you share this with your friends and family. I would certainly appreciate it. All right, so until the next part of the video comes out, I will talk to you then. Have a good one.